Choosing the correct van to make your project go smoothly is like picking a perfect mate for a relationship. Choose wisely. Also, don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Here you can see I start from the ground up. Just like building a house, you start with the foundation. I had to even the floor out with this plywood. Very, very simple. Now, when you lay this down, using the construction adhesive, use it sparingly. It's laying flat. You don't have to go crazy. Next, I put in my armor foil, which I purchased at energyefficientsolutions.com. A wonderful material to work with, very easy. And as you can see, I did not insulate the floor. There were so few air gaps that it would have been a waste of time, money, and caused a big mess. It went down very, very easily, and I can't say enough about this material. It's just wonderful. The next is one two, three, and I laid in my subfloor. I used the template from the van mat and I laid it out on my subfloor and simply traced around it. It was very, very easy. Now I laid in some what I call nailers and I used self-tapping metal screws. Those are three boxes that I placed in there and as you can see I'm starting to prep for my spray foam. Really, really make your, take your time to prep your surface. I can't say that enough. Spray foam can be very, very messy, but well worth the money. And the best solution I've discovered for insulating anything. Also, make sure you make some dance videos. I highly recommend using Handy Foam from EnergyEfficientSolutions.com. Get out all your gear, your safety gear, your respirator, goggles, gloves, nozzles, all of this stuff, including your petroleum jelly, which you will place on the nozzle head to keep things from getting gunked up. Very important to read the instructions many times. Get everything laid out so that you are ready to go. And Once you've read the directions several times over, the process will become second nature, and then you can go for it. And make sure you put petroleum jelly at the end of your nozzle. Sure, you've done that before. Then move ahead with confidence and deft spraying technique. After spending many hours doing research, I discovered this is by far the best way to insulate. Just do some cleanup and foil it, and you're all set. Next, I go under the hood to hook up my battery isolator for my auxiliary batteries. Here, I run a four aug hot wire, runs into a breaker, and then runs into the main side of my Battery Doctor battery isolator, which I highly recommend. And then I take that same four aug wire, foil the loom past the engine, and run that into the main cabin. You have to know where your electric coming in. There you can see I did. And then I hook everything up with top quality, made in America, 100 amp hour AGM batteries. I have two of them. And make sure your ground is great. Make sure all your connections are clean and keep your wiring very neat. That's an Anderson pole connector that heads up to my power center, which I'll explain later when on. When it comes to electric, I think it bears repeating. Do your research. If you don't understand electric, have someone help you. I did a ton of research and I knew what I was doing. But again, I did probably 20 hours worth of research to know exactly how everything worked. It's pretty simple, but there are some unknowns and you don't want to damage your vehicle, explode a battery, or fry your wiring in your system. Again, battery isolators are a must, without a doubt. You want some auxiliary batteries, you cannot run your electricity off your car battery, and then your power center like this does all the thinking for you. Right here is where I'm going to put my water tank, my 16 gallon water tank, my, my stove and my sink. And again, visualizing things and seeing the reality is very different. So measure everything out, tape everything so you can see your headroom and your walking space. This is going to be my clothing cabinet. I'm gonna hang my clothing cabinet. It's gonna be a tall cabinet. And over there you can see my four aug electric power line coming in. Originally, that's where my refrigerator was going to go, and then over there, I was going to put my battery and power center, and I was going to ground it underneath the seat. That all changed to make one long bench, and that was because of the help of taping and measuring everything out. I even went so far as to do a virtual cabinet where my surfboards are going to go. I measured them, and I said, okay, this is going to be my headroom. I was going to do them down low here, but that extended into my foot space, and it just didn't work. The surfboards up above worked very, very well, and I was happy I did the time. Very little in a van is straight or square or plumb, so you're going to have to be patient. 
If this kind of thing drives you crazy, then this is not the project for you. You'll find yourself using a lot of cardboard, masking tape, and eyeing things in. You'll be surprised how wonderful they come out. Like these doors I built. I was very, very happy with them. And use light materials. I use an aluminum ladder for my bed frame and it works incredibly well. Highly suggest it. So keep building your templates. Make sure your design is spot on and consistent and everything will work out just fine. Building a van is just like building a home. You need to frame everything out. You need to decide what your style is going to be. Mine was the interior of a Nantucket cottage. I have to know where my refrigerator is going to go, where all my storage, cabinets, surfboards, fly fishing, all of my gear before I do my wiring. And I By far the scariest part of this van build was putting in my 1950s Chris Craft porthole. I'm going to grind the edges really carefully first and then I'm going to, if I need to, I'm going to use my jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. Well, let's see how we go. See, I drained the, I taped as close to the edge. These are the holes that I drilled from the inside just to get an approximate because obviously I'm not Superman, although I have claimed to be in bed a few times. So I can't see through the metal. And you have to just, you know, kind of, I hate to use the word wing it, but my method is eye it in. So what I've done is taken the Dremel and basically given me a nice gouge in the metal, a nice groove. Because what I've noticed is when you're cutting with a jigsaw, it'll pretty much follow the groove a lot easier than if you just go freestyle. Freestyle is good for wrap, but not jigsaws. I could have used a little extra help on this day, but I did it myself, eyed it in, and trusted my instincts, and this Chris Craft porthole went in incredible. By the way, this porthole is tempered glass, not like the cheap RV windows they try to sell you. Guys, you can do this too. I am just handy. That's all you need to be. I'm not a professional electrician, plumber, or carpenter. Just come up with the design and be consistent. Also, have an open mind. As you can see, I use lattice work because I had a curve problem I had to find a solution for. Also, add really interesting elements like portholes or something that you find creative and consistent with your design. Use an entrance from the top refrigerator like this winter you just saw. This, by the way, is a side burner for a barbecue grill high quality, like this stainless steel sink. Do it once right. It will last that much longer. Now come on inside and let's take a look at the van completed. This upfit was a total labor of love. Now whatever your style is, whatever your taste may be, be consistent. I love the way this looks. Do a lot of research. Look at photos on Instagram, Pinterest, and on the internet of other vans and grab little ideas here and there. You may change things once you get started, you may add a hammock chair like I did here, but you'll have the basic structure and the basic design down. My bed is the comfort of home, and that's exactly what this is. It's a cottage on wheels. Those beams I made from old pallets and my video screen for nighttime and on rainy days. It's time to get back on the road and have some more adventures. Come visit me on Instagram or email me at asksteve.santagati at gmail.com. See you soon.